Hey kids, welcome to lesson 13, Introduction to Arrays, number 23, If Statements, Staying in Bounds. Currently, the user can increase or decrease the value in the global index past the bounds of your array. As a result, you've probably already seen the errors that are generated. To prevent this from happening, we're going to add if statements to the event handlers on the next and last buttons. This should check the value of the global index before changing it. If the user is about to step out of bounds of your array, it should either block, that is, do not change the current index if it will result in a value that is out of bounds, or wrap, set the index to the other end of the array. In other words, going past the end of the array moves the index back to zero, and going past the beginning of the array sets the index to the last in the array. List length will be helpful here. What does that mean? Well, really block, we would probably use if we were doing the last button, we don't want the user to go from one to the last number. We just want them to end at or stop at one. On the other end, a wrap would be if they were going up to eight and it got reset back to one. And then they went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then back to one. It looks like we're going to be using both these strategies today. We have a do this, add an if statement to the event handlers on the next and last button that prevents the global index from going out of bounds using one of the two strategies described above. I think we're going to use both of them. Run your program to confirm the user cannot go out of bounds and that the output displayed is correct. Hmm. Doesn't sound too bad to me. We're going to be using some if statements down here. And where are we going to drag those? I know it's going to be on my next and last button here, but where? If we looked up here, it really adds to the ID, then checks it. So it looks like I'm going to need something in between where I add to my current ID and before I display anything else. I'm going to take a guess and just say that's going to go in between current index and update display. Let's drag an if button in here. What do we want to have if? Well, we're talking about the current index right here. We want whatever this number here to be displayed not to go out of bounds. So I know this is going to be if my current index is what? Well, let's do the first one here. Let's do my wrap. That means once it gets to something, it's going to reset back to one. How would I do that? Well, I think if my current index is just equal to my fav thing dot length here, or the length of my list, it should reset back. Remember, I'm adding one to the list, so it should always be the current number. That means Chevy Volt is actually one, and there's three items here. That's saying if current index equals three, and there's three things in here, then set the index back down to what? Well, I wanna set the index back down to zero. So current index, is going to equal zero. Then we want to update the display. That's how I think it should work. Before we get crazy and try our last button, let's test this on our next button. I'm gonna hit run. One of three, two, three, back to one. So this one, won't let me go out of bounds in the next direction. Let's try our last button here. Same thing, it's gonna go in between my current index and my update display. I'm gonna drag this in here. And this one is going to be the same thing. We're still talking about the current index. But this time we want it to be equal to something. We're really worried if this one is what? Less than zero, because we don't want it to go below zero. What happens if it does go below zero? Well, we want to set the current index to 
to equal what? Well, my favorite things list, dot length again. And I remember back to my other lesson, when we got out of bounds, we used the list length minus one. So it was always within the size of the list length. So let's try list length minus one, semicolon. We have a little yellow triangle here. Looks like I have a spelling error and it's fave thing, not fave things. That means if the current index is less than zero, it's gonna set the current index, whatever the length is, minus one. Let's try this out. Run. I know my next button's working. And look at that. So this one's saying now that I'm taking my list length minus one. So if I have on my list three things, one, two, three, when I get to the last, it is just going the other way. It is taking whatever my list length is minus one. Remember we index zero through nine, list are one through three. So it's just taking it to the last number in the list. I was a little wrong how that's gonna work. I thought it was gonna stop it. And instead what it does is it just takes us to our last one. That is very interesting. Looking back up here, we added if statements to our event handlers in our next and last buttons, and it prevents us from going out of bounds. We ran our code and guess what? We can't go out of bounds anymore, kids. Let's try adding something. I know all of our favorite things is school. And as you can see, because we used all these global variables, it's still not going out of bounds. Pretty neat, kids. Pretty neat. I think that's all code.org wants from us. Let's hit finish and see if they want anything else. Nope. Good job, kids. I'll see you on the next lesson.